You are good to go. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This is the Durham Village Commission meeting. Uh, today is Tuesday, August 4th, 2020. It is now 4.01 p.m. A meeting here on the Cisco WebEx in lieu of in-person. Uh, next monthly business meeting will be at 12 noon on Tuesday, August 18th, 2020. Uh, expecting to be still on a virtual meeting, the WebEx. The next commission hearing will be 4 p.m. Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. Again, anticipating still being virtual by the WebEx. Move on to the swearing in of staff. So staff, you please raise your right hand. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do, Jacqueline Lehman, Assistant Preservation Officer. Thank you, Jacqueline. Can you hear me? Yes. Are we expecting any other staff to speak today? Uh, no, just me. Okay. All right, we'll do uh, an introduction of the commissioners present. Uh, I'm Anthony Harkey, commission chair. Commissioner Panzer. Jay Panzer, vice chair. Commissioner Thiel. Ned Thiel. Commissioner Durst. Chewissa Durst, present. Commissioner Farrell. Jeff Ferriel, I'm here. I don't know why you can't see me, but I'm here. Commissioner McCoy. Uh, I'm here. Thank you. And Commissioner Foley. Brett Foley is here. Commissioner Foley, are you there? I am. I must have talked before I fully <laughs> unmuted. Brett Foley here. Fair enough. All right, uh, we have a full contingent of commissioners here today. Uh, we'll move on to the approval of minutes from Tuesday, July 7th of 2020. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. This is Jake Panzer. Second. Uh, second. Yes, Choice. Give it to Sharissa. She can. You can see her. There we go. <laughs> All right. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor, we'll take a roll call. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. And Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye. Let's have it. Uh, moving on to uh, items of public forum. Are there any items of public forum? Right. There are no items for public forum. Uh, moving on to the approval of staff approvals, which begin on page the bottom of page four. <clears throat> so, Mr. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Ferriel. I need to recuse from 20-08-018774 South 6th Street. You recuse myself from uh, item number GV-20-08-011, 45 Jackson Street. And GV-2008-021, again, 245 Jackson Street. Frankly, I'm not positive, but for the moment, I'm going to uh, recuse myself from GV 20 08 020 250 East Sycamore, J. Panzer. Any other recusals? Uh, yes, Commissioner Harkey. Um, this is Karen McCoy. I have to recuse myself from GV 20 08 628 South 6th Street. If 
There are no more refusals. There is there a motion. Mr. Chairman, this is a deal. I move to ratify the staff approvals. Jay Panzer, second. Are there any questions on the motion? All those in favor, we'll take a roll. Mr. Panzer? Aye. Deal? Aye. Thirst? Aye. Ariel? Aye. McCoy? Aye. And Foley? Aye. Our votes aye. Ayes have it. Uh, moving on to the application for certificates of appropriateness. Uh, item number one is GV 20 08 026 877 Mohawk Street. So, this application involves the installation of new hardscape, and that includes removing the existing deck and filling in the former deck area with pavers, and that's to match the remaining existing patio material. The application will also include adding two wide limestone steps and that door to provide access to the patio area and to replace a rear siding. Um, they will be removing existing siding on the rear of the house due to the age, and they like to replace the siding originally with hardy board. However, um, uh, from uh, feedback from the June uh, July business meeting, the commissioners noted that the hardy board siding would not be approved on um, historic homes or additions to historic homes. Um, and that's due to previous test cases with the hardy board that did not perform well. So the applicant did say that they were open to uh, installing floral or wood siding um, as well. Uh, I have not received materials confirming uh, either one, but that they were open to that. And staff so does recommend approval with the condition that the siding would be floral or wood, something compatible with the building. Do we have the applicant here? Cheryl Brown, are you on the I don't see a Cheryl Brown on the call. I do not like her. Unknown caller. Street caller. Uh, I mean, the options, we, options we have are to uh, put this back to the list for the time being, come back to it later, or we could potentially vote on the wood or boral, as the applicant had mentioned. This is tricky because the, and I'm not, obviously, I'm not doubting the word of HPO, but the applicant has not. There's no record of the, there's no record before the commission that the applicant has modified the application. So I think that that we can't really do it as a modification. What we could conceivably do is to um, authorize staff to approve it if it were to be done with wood or boral. Does that make sense? Why don't we just pass it as that, as that being conditional? That's exactly that, what I was going to say, Ned. Thank you, Ned. That was really what I meant to say. <laughs> right. I took the long way around the barn. Forgive All right. me. It's a tough we got day. There. It's been a tough day. We got so there. I'll, I'll make the motion uh, to approve GV-20-08-026 under the condition that the siding is boral or wood to match existing. Second. Uh, any questions on the motion? And just clarification that it has to be uh, approved by staff one way or the other. That was the intent of my motion, correct? Gotcha. Clarification noted. Any other questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Panthiel? Aye. Durst? Aye. Ariel? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Moving on to agenda item number GV-20-08-027. Again, 877 Mohawk Street. Uh, the applicant is not here still. Okay, so this application involves the installation of a new pergola. 
Um, and this pergola would be located directly behind the house within the backyard. The pergola will not have visibility from the right of way. And the proposed pergola, uh, the material is to be cedar, and the dimensions are approximately 13 foot by 17 foot. And we'll have posts with stone bases. The top of the pergola will include beads topped with rafters and purlins for additional shade. Um, some feedback from the July business meeting included that the commissioners wanted to clarify whether any expanded patio area was part of this application. Uh, the response that I received from the applicant was that the patio is not considered uh, part of the application and it will not extend beyond the existing patio area. Yeah. The staff does recommend approval of the installation of the pergola. For the commission, any issues with the application that is submitted? I know how tall it's going to be. Thir no, with the 13 feet, but it doesn't say how it does it. It says that the width is 13 feet. I guess we don't have more confirmation that the 17 foot is the height of the pergola. Yeah, I'm guessing that's the length. If the width is 13, looking at the diagram. The other question I have, it says stone um, bases on the, the, and maybe we don't care, but those look to be actually like a, a concrete block on the picture and not a true stone. Do we care about that, commissioners? Sorry, Jay Panzer, you raise an interesting point, Brent, because it's not only that, but it in the photograph, at least, it looks like they're concrete pavers. I mean, yeah, again, do we care whether people use concrete pavers in their backyards? I, I guess the rendering, you don't know from the rendering. I think right, you right. got to go with the fact that they said stone. Assume that that is True. what they're going to do. True. For the sake of uh, of trying not to throw wrenches into the works, if it is a concrete paver, is that a problem? We go back to approve. I want to make sure we're, we're approving with the clarification. We've approved concrete pavers in backyards, as long as they're not visible. True. <laughs> It doesn't particularly bother me either. I just wanted to note it since the picture looked a little different than what the application said. I would recommend on the on the motion to make the notes one way or the other or both That's ways. Brick. That's brick, I believe, on the pavers, but the application said stone on the bases of the pergola post, I believe, right? Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, that presupposes they know the difference between stone and concrete pavers. <laughs> right. Good point. If there is no uh, objection to the, to the application, is there a motion for the application? Mr. Chairman, regarding uh, application GV-20-08-027-87 Mohawk Street, so I move to approve it as submitted. Second. Are there any questions or clarifications on the motion? Right, hearing none, move on to a vote. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Moving on to agenda item number three, GV-20-07-049, a conceptual application for 693 City Park. 
Uh, do we have the applicants here? This is Gary Alexander. I'm one. Text. Uh, Mr. Alexander, if you could please raise your right hand. <laughs> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name one more time for the record. Uh, Gary Alexander. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So this application involves um, the installation of a new addition. The applicant would like to construct a new shed dormer at the master bedroom on the rear elevation. The current double hung windows on the south elevation of the bedroom do not meet code requirements for emergency egress. The new dormer would match the existing dormer in size and material and will be placed symmetrically near the center of the roof. And the new operable placement windows uh, are to be Marvin Signature Collection wood clad with simulated check rail. Some feedback the uh, commissioners had at the July business meeting included request for information on the age and condition of the existing slate roof. And the commissioners also asked for information on whether the master bedroom and bathroom are existing. Would you like me to respond to the question? <laughs> yes, the this is the third time we've been before the commission for changes to this this particular house. The uh, the the master bedroom and master bath exist. It's the primary bedroom in the house. The only windows in that bedroom are the two windows that face the south side. Uh, those windows are approximately 15 inches wide. So not provide much light and obviously they don't meet the egress requirement. So the purpose of the dormer addition is to provide more light and at the same time meet the egress requirement. The the existing slate, the contractor who did the prior two projects on this house um, went out and reviewed the slate. I have photos of the slate. I can submit um, if we submit an app, a formal application for this. Um, the existing slate is in poor condition. He has pictures of it crack, cracking. Um, he has chips, some are missing. Um, so there definitely needs to be some maintenance um, if the dormer is installed, but he does believe the dormer can be installed in a way that preserves much of the existing slate. So this is uh, Commissioner Farrell. I think I was one of those who was interested in the quality of the slate. My, my concern is we normally don't permit brand new holes to be cut into uh, existing slate roofs, but if this slate roof only has a couple of years left on anyway, and it's going to be torn off in the next, uh, in the short term, why then that doesn't seem to me to be as compelling a reason to resist cutting a hole into the roof. To, to further clarify this commissioner Foley, so the when the bedroom was done when was the bedroom done has it been that way for a long time that would have predated yeah. code or was it done in a way done previously and did not meet code or how, how did this come about the um okay my experience with this house started about 15 years ago with a previous owner at that time, it was the primary bedroom up there, and the master bath was in the location with him. Now, at, at that time, we actually came before the board and modified that existing dormer and created French doors and a balconette. So the commission allowed us to remove some of the roof to create a balconette. And then we came back 2014, redid the bathroom, made the dormer look more like it originally did. So those windows in that existing dormer replaced what was a French door. And we were able to patch and repair the roof where the balcony had occurred. Hmm. So we don't know the record of when this was converted. It's likely been the only bedroom in the in the house as long as the house has existed then. Yeah, it's only big enough up there for two rooms. So, um, 
and, and the one room has the bathroom and the other the bedroom. So I certainly understand the desire to make it safer and more code compliant. Um, but that that's at the choice of the owner. I mean, there's nothing, there's no code owner and there never will be a code owner in existing condition. Right. We're not required right. to, to comply with code now. Correct. That turning a way out of a burning building is a highly desirable feature. <laughs> and having a way for the firefighters to get in is probably even more important. And so to the applicant, I mean, is that that's what's driving this primarily is the safety concern? Well, I mean, to be honest, I think it's both and safety. So um, there's a desire to get more light up there as well. Uh, you know, safety is important, but I think natural light is important too. I think what we're all struggling with is is the appropriateness of modifying, you know, the character of a contributing building in such a way. I think there's some pretty mitigating factor. I mean, I, I tend to start from that place of not really wanting to go here, but I think there are a couple of things that, that mitigate this. I'm, I'm not sure whether or enough, but I think the safety, the fact that it is an existing bedroom that would not today meet code and we can allow it to be brought to code is very different than the circumstance that we are frequently faced with where someone says, oh, I have a third floor, I want to put a bedroom up there, therefore, can we put a dormer in? A very different circumstance from that. The second thing is that, that having just heard that some significant modifications were made to the dormer, the existing dormer in the past, makes me a little less queasy about allowing a, a a second dormer matching this one to be added. The, I, to me, those are mitigating factors. I don't know, you know, the the other side of it is we normally don't let dormers get put in, in these these types of locations. Right, and Jay, the, the, the question then becomes the way that <laughs> this is a really complex issue because the way the dormer is being put in, you likely wouldn't be able to tell that it's a new dormer, right? And is that appropriate to do? Well, that's that's the question because something this small, do you make a point of differentiating it um, so it does not look like it was original, which we can do, but then it becomes more prominent on that roof um, right. because of that contrast. And, and to, to follow that thought process in this particular instance, outlining what Jay outlined, outlining what you just said that, you know, it would probably draw more attention to it um, if it was made to look different. I currently I'm okay with the application myself, but I'd like to hear what the other commissioners think. Yeah, I'm, I understand it all and I get it and probably the former is appropriate, but you know, if I'm going to say yes to this, I'm never going to deny another dormer on a slate roof. Well, maybe that's okay. That's why I'm interested in the in the slate roof. You probably know, or in the age and condition of the slate roof, you probably know. And my view is most of these slate roofs are just about ready to be thrown in the land land fill anyway. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, I don't see holding up a project that we would approve five years from now or three years from now when the slate roof is in the landfill. Yeah, and, and Jeff, I agree with you, but that's why I'm saying that from now on, you want a dormer and a slate roof, I'm all for it. Well, but I think what Jeff's perspective, and I don't mean to be speaking for you, Jeff, but I will anyway for a moment. Um, 
I think Jeff's point is that you need to evaluate the condition of the slate roof as part of the evaluation of whether to approve it. If there was a slate roof that was, you know, very well tended, very well cared for, and, and or perhaps new, then it would be a different thing. But if a, you know, if if this is a slate roof where someone could come to us in in a now even or in a year or two or three and say the slate roof, we want to tear it off, we want to put asphalt shingles on it. Aren't we better to approve the uh, the dormer now? And as part of the same application, and I don't know whether it is part of the same application, but but to make sure that the uh, the slate roof is appropriately cared for. And and Jay, that just confirms exactly what I'm saying. You got to be consistent. We have no evaluation on the slate roof. It looks bad from the photographs. If we're going to assume that it's bad. I'm going to assume oh, that. All maybe, of them from here on are, and, and this is a conceptual. Lesson. This is a conceptual application, and maybe that's part of what our review of the application is. We need yeah. slate assessments in order to, in order to say that that it's appropriate to allow a dormer be put in. We need an assessment that says that the slate roof as a whole is well cared for, well maintained, but has a shelf life of has a very sh short shelf life. I can bring you some documentation if we go forward with formal submission regarding the condition of the slate. So what do we think is appropriate? Five-year life, 10-year life, two-year life? Yeah, I'm not sure I've come to a conclusion on that for my. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, and I think, you know, what would be really hard is if the applicant wanted to put a new slate roof on <laughs> with the dormer in the new slate roof. That would probably be okay. Yep, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Just like if you wanted to put a new dormer on a roof with a shingle roof. Yeah. Right, right. right. Yeah. I'm not going to argue that at all. It's the historic material and the expanse of it is the issue. And to make one comment towards the, uh, um, I think it was the question of do we differentiate a new dormer? If, if a new dormer goes in, you differentiate it from what's existing. I think the fact that that dormer is there, A, probably not original, it was added on some point, there was work done to it, and then there was work done to quote unquote bring it back to more what was originally there. I think the work has been done to, to identify it as not original. I think if a, do a second dormer goes in, matching closely matching what's there, I don't think would be a big issue from that standpoint. No, I think it needs to match. I agree. Agree. And the fact that's on the rear elevation, even though it's on a corner lot, the rear elevation is definitely much better than the front elevation. So yeah, I got going for it. I mean, it's visible from the side street, and that's okay. Well, my question is: Have we given the applicant enough to? Chew on to come up with an application if they want to. I I think so. It, it it sounds there's some potential support uh, for the application. I can I can summarize. I think that the biggest hurdle to get past for a successful application moving forward is condition of roof uh, beyond anything else. If we can't get past Cutting into a slate roof. I don't think there's any path forward. If we can get past that, I, I think you're, you might have support to, to get there. Okay. I, I can't say whether we're we're there yet or not. <laughs> we're kind of we're that's our our hurdle to get past. All right. Well, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the next item. Uh, agenda item number four, GV-20-07-041, 245 Lansing Street. Uh, we have Mr. Hours here on the call. Yes, sir, I'm here. I'm, oh, there we go. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep. Looking for your video. If you could please raise your right hand. 
you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Mark Hours, Mode Architects for the homeowner. Thank you very much, uh, Jacqueline. Sure. Uh, so this application includes modifying the rear door opening of the house for the submitted drawings. Uh, they would like to demolish an existing non-historic garage and replace with a carriage house with living space above the garage. Uh, they like to have sleeping quarters and a bathroom, but no kitchen. And the exterior materials, uh, at least originally, was supposed to be pearl nickel gap siding and cement board panels and IPE slat railings. The applicant has submitted um, a number of revised documents in response to the feedback from the June business meeting and the past hearings. And some of the feedback from the June hearing included that the proposed carriage house or I'm sorry, this is from the June hearing. There's a proposed carriage house read as a new built house rather than the second story structure. Um, and then because of that did not follow the guidelines um, that the Commissioner Durst was on the fence in regard to the massing and that the two stories on the alley reads again more like a house than a secondary structure. Commissioner Ferriel noted that the house uh, or the carriage house as proposed would overwhelm the alley because it was considerably larger than the structures in the alley. Commissioner McCoy's feedback concluded that the changes that have occurred to the garage design have been helpful in breaking up the massing, but the flat roof does create a larger appearance. Commissioner Foley noted that there are no concerns from a massing standpoint, but some articulation would help soften the massing visual weight. And Commissioner Harkey noted that massing and the surface area were too large compared to the structures in the alley. And Commissioner Panzer noted that the visual weight overwhelms these structures around the proposed house. And not just the height, but the mass uh, and solidity and overall visual weight of the design. And in response to those comments, the applicant has submitted uh, a couple of new documents, which we can bring up in a second. All right, Mr. Howard, do you have anything to add? I think the staff report was a fair summary. Uh, seen this twice before. We've made some further modifications to the alleyscape. We've tried to create a more vernacular uh, facade treatment with the buildings. Um, when up here in a second, um, I'll walk you through that. But I'm going to reiterate that I I think that from an alley skate point of view, I think the building is subservient to the houses on the south side of the alley. Um, the homeowner and I are under the opinion that I think being penalized for the scale of the garage, particularly the garage on the or somebody else's name. You know, we show the kind of Paula, I think I think the existing scale of the garage on the west, uh, this is a very similar position you were just having about being penalized for a dormer before the slate roof gets replaced. I think being penalized for a low lying garage that's going to be replaced in a very short term by the next homeowner. I don't think we should be penalized for the lowest structure on the block. I think it's appropriate to read that we are lower than the predominant primary structures on the block were also lower than the eave heights uh, of the existing house. Uh, if you could flip to the next slide. Next slide, please. You're looking for A9, I believe. Changed, it's really the alleyscape views that are different. The elevation is now different. We've we've added some additional fenestration to the second floor. We've graduated the facade with some some treatments between pulling out uh, a little canopy of the garage door. So there's the alleyscape. Um, I think that the, the fenestration being more symmetrical, symmetrical and more conventional. We've also changed the materiality of that portion of the facade to have a greater degree of residential siding, which is the nickel gap and a much smaller amount of the cement board around the garage doors. Uh, next slide, please. These are the views of the alleyscape. So I think this is a good view of showing that the uh, the height of the southern facade is serving it to the eaves of the houses. Uh, we're not too into the garage that's on the east side of us, which you can see from that view there. So with that, that summarizes the changes that we've made. I will I will stop talking and listen. 
All right, questions, comments? Actually, before we go to that, any um, speaker slips? Uh, no speaker slips for any of the applications. Okay, fantastic. Uh, commissioners, any questions, comments on the application? Commissioner Foley, I guess I'll go first. Um, I think that, you know, we've talked very often about with new construction, there's the three components, there's the massing, there's the materials, materiality, and the detailing. I think the changes, you know, when you look at the one drawing that is the, the drawing that shows how it compares to the height of the ex other structures, you know, the, the guidelines say that it should hit the average between the height and it looks pretty close to hitting the average of the different heights, you know, 26.5 is the tallest, 18 is the lowest and it looks like we're at 20. So we're probably actually below the average heights. So I think from a scale and massing standpoint and stepping it back, Mark, I think you've hit it in my opinion. And I think that the materiality changes um, and kind of, you know, less, you know, stepping it back help a ton too. And I think you're, you're varying appropriately now, and I would be in support of this application as it's submitted myself. Well, I'll comment. I think everybody knows where I'm at with this um, regarding the requirements for massing. Well, let's first talk about the alley. On, on the north side of the alley, it's one story, two car garages from one end to the east end at uh, whatever, I forget what the street is down there. Jaeger, is that right? Yes, it's Jaeger. Yeah, it's outlet Jaeger, too. yeah. And then the other side of the alley is um, an industrial type building that's an addition to the back of uh, Swan Cleaners. And then there's a two car garage, maybe another one. And then there's some Two story cottages and on the corner is a story and a half cottage. Um, it is a very narrow alley. And that's kind of what the fabric and language of that alley is currently. Um, this garage um, really has nothing to do with the houses on the other side. Even the mark you're trying to make that comparison. They don't relate. Um, the language is different. The function is different. Um, this is not competing with this. This is a secondary structure to the house on Lansing. Um, it is larger than the two story, uh, one story, two car garages on its side. Um, it is massing too big, it's height too big, and it's not articulated anywhere near anything like that. And the architecture basically is alien, just looking at that, it's alien to what's on the, on the alley. Um, I don't think it meets any of the requirements that the guidelines have. Um, and I'll, I'll make this comment. I'm currently in a, in a, NAPSI forum over the over the week, which is the National Alliance of uh, Preservation Commissions. And I was in a, a forum yesterday afternoon and they reminded me what preservation was all about and why it came about. It, it was a result of the 60s and urban renewal and clearing out stuff that was old and ugly and didn't apply anymore, had no value. And we lost a lot of early 20th century buildings and stuff that was replaced by mid-century 60s stuff um through 60s and 70s and it was also used as a tool to cut neighborhoods apart and stuff like that um i, I thought of this project mark when i when i was reminded of that and i, I think clearing out a two-story or one-story garage on the other side of the street um, which is is an applicable and appropriate form whether it's historic or not on that side of the alley and replacing it with something that is lamb and two stories doesn't relate to anything in massing, height, or articulation is totally appropriate. And this is what we have historic preservation for. And this is what we have guidelines is I'm sorry to prevent this stuff. Um, it's to maintain the fabric of the village, whether it's an alley that has no name or whether it is down Third Street or Beck Street or whatever. That's what historic preservation is about. And I think this is a total slam against that and totally just in violation of what what the whole guidelines and the probation what this commission is about so i'll this is commissioner ferial so i'll chime in here too so what was the talk the other week about an intrusion yeah so it just it it is going to stick out like a sore thumb 
as not belonging in German village. And, and we've got a couple of buildings around that kind of that do that. And I don't want to continue to go down that path just because there's a kind of an old garage there that the owners don't like. Commissioner Durst, your thoughts on the application? Yeah, I was on the fence, but I have to say I'm kind of being swayed by Ned's argument because it is a very cool design. It is a really, really yeah. nice design. And um, but it's 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 a building that when you go down the alley, you're just not going to like, as Jay once put it, just see it out of the corner of your eye and go, oh, that was interesting. You're going to stop and look at it and go, wow, that's really cool. It, it's it's an eye catching design. So, yeah, if it's a secondary building trying to blend into the background, it's not it's not going to do that. Mr. Panzer. Deeply conflicted. <laughs> um, if, if this were, and I, I, I don't even necessarily know why I, I feel this way about it. I think that the the nature, the the couple of residences on this alley, and uh, there are at least a couple, right? Um, to me, to me, the idea that you'd have a structure like this fighting with a bunch of two star, bunch of story and a half garages or that, that we might well allow to be replaced by carriage houses at some point, that doesn't torque me out nearly as much as the the um, the juxtaposition of of this very hard edge design with the um, with the much softer house directly across the street, and I think the other one that's down the block. Um, what what's kind of funny is that that I can almost and and don't take this as as a if you change this it would be fine, but the thing that does it to me is is the weight of the canopy the visual weight of the canopy. Um, I, I'm actually and you talk about massing materials and details that <clears throat> excuse me the massing is on edge. The materiality has largely been changed, with the exception of the the um, uh, that cement board. Um, but the detailing is um, is no less finely figured than the details that are that are in the existing. And and you know I've I've often said that that. You can vary one of the three things, or you have to vary one of the three things in order to differentiate. If you get it really right, you can do it. You can do two. If you really get it, I, I have the feeling that this one is like a two and a half. And what we've always said is three is three is unacceptable because it just becomes a foreign thing. And to me, it it, it I'm getting into not horse trading here, but to me. The, the weight, the visual weight of that frame is kind of pushing it to that half. Um, I, I'm waiting for somebody to convince me otherwise, but but I haven't necessarily heard the. Uh, I haven't been convinced in either direction yet. Um, I think the changes have the changes have been really helpful, but I don't know whether I get there. All right, uh, Mr. Hours, would you like us to build on the application as is, or would you like to proceed? Uh, well, I think at this point, I, I've sort of run out of runway on things that I can I can change to this. So I think at this point, we need to have a candid conversation about if I change this to a story and a half expression with dormers on it, this structure is going to get taller. 
the ridge is going to be maybe five or six feet taller than than the height of the structure is now. Now, yes, there'll be a, an eave expression along the alley, but there's still going to be a dormer. There's still going to be two windows fenestrated on that south facade the same way that I have it there. You previously supported the variances to allow a carriage house here. So I, before my my clients go and change their entire design to appease this discussion about massing, I, I need some confirmation from all of you that if the overall structure height on average taller here, that, that you're going to be okay with that. I think that's the that's the trade off here. I mean, the reason we were pushing for the flat roof was to not make this thing get bigger and bigger. And unfortunately, I think that's what's going to happen on the side elevations. Mark, we approved the carriage house variance based on your statement that this is what we would always do for anything. And we said, yeah, we kind of would. That didn't mean we would approve a carriage house design here. I mean, I could go and ask for a zoning variance to build right up to my property line in front. And, and it would it be appropriate for them to say, yeah, sure, but we're not going to approve you if we ever design something there. Well, uh, Commissioner Theo, I think that's a fairly disingenuous statement because we submitted for a conceptual review on the same agenda that we submitted the zoning variances. I, I think I think to say that anybody can get a variance approved, but they can't get a building design approved. Well, we usually leave the zoning variances until the building designs approved, but we made an exception for you, Mark, because you said, hey, gang, these are the standard ones that we usually do. And we said, yeah, you're right. So we gave it to you. And I don't think that um, I don't think and Ned, I know you've said it, but I don't think that you've necessarily heard from the majority of the commission that the idea of a starting to have carriage house is problematic. I think right. it, it could be problematic given the the mass that you're saying or that you're suggesting, I you know, I you know, we're not looking at interior at the moment, we're not looking at interior sections to see what the floor heights and ceiling heights are, but um that and I and I go back to the the flat roof part, at least for me, I don't find that incredibly troubling. I, I and I, I I go back to what I just said is I'm I'm tipped over the edge on there being two and a half variances of of the three that we have to deal with and that I've never been part of going beyond two. But I, I haven't heard anybody else respond to that concept or not. And Jay, it's the mass of the canopy that's that you're saying that's driving that half. You, it, it, it seems to be because it's it, it's I don't uh, the detailing of that is very all of the detailing of the surrounding structures is is very fine boned and this is you know at the end of the day it, it's really a brutalist expression. It's a brutalist expression in a wood framed neighborhood. I mean, Com Commissioner Panzer. It would you would you find this reasonable if that cement board element went away altogether? And it was just residential siding with two windows and two garage doors? I I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to, to whether um whether it it would wind up being too slab like, but I Mark, I think you need to propose what you want to do and not negotiate the design yeah. of this meeting. Yeah, no, yeah. I understand that. I'm not I'm not trying to do that. I'm just I'm cautioning that I, I've I started at a story and a half massing with the homeowners and we settled on this flat roof because the building was was not as as chunky. Um because I think the only way I can get this to work is to turn the gabled ends east west. I can't turn the gabled end towards the alley the way that the garage that's east of us. And put the dormers on the side, the windows would be in the wrong location. I'm just pointing out that a story and a half expression will ultimately be taller. I don't want to go and change everything and come back at the meeting only to find out that we're still talking about the massing being a problem. 
So uh, a comment, could be. comment I'll make. Um, so the, the, the current design reminds me a little bit of uh, on Cedar Alley, um, just west of Frank Fetch Park. There's a garage that's rectilinear uh, in the front facade. It's not the full story and a half, two story uh, expression. Um, it's got brick with a small balcony, and then there's a structure behind it. It, it. I think we're missing your mark here. Your uh, audio is cutting in and out. Um, but if you go up Cedar Alley a little further north, there's a garage that is a kind of dormer on top, more traditional type of, of garage there. Uh, I haven't seen. A, a comparative analysis of the, the carriage houses that we have around the village. I need to take a walk myself to see what's out there. But typically, when what I see is when you get to a, a more pitched roof versus a flat roof, it tends to make the the imposing nature on the alley a little less severe, uh, which leans towards more height um, appropriateness. I think that's that's the trade off that happens is you get height, but you don't have all the massing up on the alleyscape. Um, I think that's what drives acceptability of a taller height for a carriage there, there's, there's a there's a six there's a story and a half um garage on my on my block here on jaeger i think it's it's not apples to apples it's the apples to oranges of the, of the different style design being compatible with with what's around it If I if I can ask Ned a question, um, Ned, you, you mentioned the the purpose of preservation. Now, we're not stating that the building should be historically. Um, you're not stating that you think the building should be historically um, representative exactly of what's there, but you think that it needs to be closer into the context and more compatible. And the language and the pattern that's there on the alley, correct. Right. So, I mean, the difficulty here, Mark, is this is a very, you know, we and, and Jay's come back to it, and and I, I'm in support still. But, you know, the German Village Consi Commission considers all three elements in reviewing a proposal for new construction, and three elements are massing materials and details. Design new structure is compatible with the historic neighborhood must generally vary from historic context and one of these elements varying two elements is occasionally acceptable varying all three elements is rarely if ever appropriate so the detailing it sounds like the detailing of that canopy is making this feel more massive and it's not necessarily that the canopy's there but it's the monolithic nature of it that's that's giving some of the commissioners a little bit of um, heartburn I'm not trying to speak for you Jay but I'm just trying to get at the issue that you're identifying. No, I think you actually hit it right. And, and it is interesting to say a little bit of heartburn because it's it's really a little bit of heartburn for, for me at least. It's not, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't immediately knee jerk and go, wow, no way, no how. I just, you know, I, I start analyzing it based on those three things and I'm not, I, I, I'm not getting, I'm not able to um, get all of those levels pushed down enough, or at least one of those levels pushed down enough that uh, that it passes that those tests. The fact that it's a flat roof garage, the fact that it's of its current height, um, that that doesn't happen to torque me out what's happening with the design on the on the interior side you know from half the back that doesn't torque me out um but the failure to i i i still can't i can't fit this in to the definition that brent just read commissioners um in the interest of, you know, you're, not, you're on number four here. I think you have about 17 applications. Maybe you could <laughs> yep. um, give some, if it were, you want to do a straw poll or something like that, so we can move, move ahead on this one. Thanks. I guess the question, Mr. Alves, do you want us to vote or do you want to continue? 
Well, Commissioner Harkey, I haven't heard from you or, or Commissioner McCoy. I, I do have the sense that I don't have four votes here. I need to leave here with a sense of whether or not there's a path forward or whether or not I need to completely change the design. Yeah. Commissioner McCoy? You thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> well, let's just vote. Oh. This isn't, yeah, I guess it's it's still a conceptual review. Okay. <laughs> Is it? No. Yeah, no, I'm looking yeah. at the wrong one. Commissioner McCoy, are you for or against as submitted? Have we lost Jaron McCoy? Maybe that's why we haven't heard from her. <laughs> her mic, uh, okay, her sorry. I thought my mic didn't unmute. I thought it had. She's um, do you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I think this has helped with this um, with this application. And I would vote for for the simple reason that we have approved similar things. We have one over by Franklin Art Glass. Um, the difference is the the canopy, you know, is not heavy like that, and it has a wire railing, I believe, on it like a mesh, more mesh railing, but I, I find it to be very similar. And maybe the difference there is that there are tall structures on either side of it, but we've the, approved some things pretty similar. Yeah, Karen, the, the one on Lear is, is in the context of the industrial commercial buildings around it. That's why it's I like see. it is. That's okay. why it's like it is. That's it was designed like that way. It was a great, great mm -hmm. response and it got an award. But it's appropriate in the context there. And I, I would vote in favor myself. <laughs> Sounds like you got course, so, three and, and a half. Course, <laughs> and of course I'm concerned <laughs> and of course I'm concerned that this expands the this direction mm -hmm. of of ultra modern design in a neighborhood that it doesn't fit the uh, doesn't fit the style in any way, shape, or manner, and then this will be used as a precedent the next time we have something that's a little bit different, um, that, that's in a different neighborhood, and they say, "Well, you did it there, you did it here, you did it the third place, and the barn doors." And, and Jeff, I'm going to point out here after being in the, the symposium this week, we are. Every time we do this, we are losing what our historic designation was based on. And all it takes is one person to go to the park service and say, we want a reevaluation on whether this truly is a historic district anymore or whether we've lost sufficient fabric that it's reneged. Well, this is the commissioner's problem. It's incremental changes that cause you to lose it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, Mark, Mark, you look like you're at three, three, four, four against. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I I request a continuance of our application, please. Okay. I Sarah. will, I will motion to continue. Mm -hmm. uh, I lost the number. I just had it. <laughs> Twenty-seven zero four one. Thank you, Jeff. That one. Is there a second? Marissa, second. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Neil? Aye. Durst? Aye. Ariel? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Foley? Aye. Garris votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion continued. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda item GB 20 07 046. 369 Jackson Street. I need to excuse myself from this one. Commissioner Panzer, you're you the gavel. Hey guys, I'm going to leave the meeting momentarily and then rejoin and hope my camera is on when I rejoin. Uh, thanks, Jeff. So I'll be gone for probably 30 seconds. Commissioner Panzer, you have the chair. I guess that means I should probably unmute my microphone. <laughs> Oops.
Uh, agenda item number five, application GV-20-07-046369, Jackson. Um, are the applicants here? Uh, I'm here, Bill Thompson. Would you raise your right hand, please? I swear to tell the truth, all truth, and nothing but. I do. Uh, and state your name again, just for the record. Bill Thompson with Ohio Exteriors. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, so this application involves a new screen porch and balcony. The applicant would be replacing an existing rear deck. Um, the proposed pergola would be seated and approximately 13 feet by 17 feet. And we'll whoa, have whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Is that the wrong one? Reading the wrong one. <laughs> well, they actually have some verbiage in ours that does not again go to ours. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Sorry, one, it's verbiage. So the, fir the first bullet point is not does not belong here, correct? Um, correct. The pergola is from one you've already listened or heard. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so this is yeah. The replacement of an existing rear deck um with 12 feet by 15 feet with the screen porch that'll be slightly smaller in size, 12 feet by 13 feet. And that is the correct step for your project, right? That is correct. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the application will also include the screen porch to be structural material covered with smooth cedar to match trim on the addition with a flat membrane roof. The applicant would like to construct a floating deck or balcony above the proposed screen porch to utilize the, for the purpose of to utilize of existing French doors. The applicant would like the deck handrail to be cedar to match the existing porch handrail and painted to match the addition from color. And the proposed deck will be floating and installed over a flat membrane roof. Uh, do you have anything to add? Uh, I believe the last time we spoke about it, you guys wanted to see uh, the details as far as the gutter attachment to the flat membrane roof, and you wanted to see the detail on the skirting. Um, and then we also gave you um, options on the handrail after speaking with the homeowner. I gave you two options. Basically, option one is what the homeowner would like, and options number two is what the homeowner will accept. Um, the first one being a uh, composite rail with bronze balusters to sort of mimic the color in the, uh, the windows and the doors that are presently on the back of the house that have a bronze finish to them. And the other option is as originally proposed, which is just a cedar rail um, designed with two by twos, a two by four cap rail, two by four bottom rail with a four by four post to match the rails on the existing side porch. Um, let's go to commissioners in one second. Just as a note about the railing, while I'm not certain that we've ever allowed the text composite handrails. There's no question that that on uh, on rear porches we have allowed materials other than a traditional cedar two by twos and two by four rails. Um, actually, the the property we were just talking about has it on both sides. It, it's a contemporary structure, but uh, the house on Lear and and several others have uh, wire. Uh, railing systems mm -hmm. and other types of systems that have been approved. I just wanted to put that out there before going around robin with commissioners. Commissioners, any <laughs> issues? <laughs> Anybody? I, I think the either rail is fine. I think the first one's odd, but that's that's okay. Mm -hmm. This is commissioner's deal. Okay. Anybody else? I don't wow. see everybody's mute on the subject. <laughs> I would suggest I would suggest you smile and nod a lot with this point. <laughs> um, yeah, hearing nothing else, would someone like to make a motion? Yep. An item, let's see, we're on number five, GV 20 07 046 369 Jackson Street. I move to approve as submitted the choice of hand railing is up to the applicant. Is there second. a second? Second. 
That was Commissioner Ferriero. Yes. Okay. Um, I will call the roll. Unfortunately, I'm doing this probably in a different order from Anthony, but I just jotted it down. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Commissioner Ferriero. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Uh, Jay Panzer, Vice Chair, votes aye. That's it. Ayes have it. All right. Thank you very much. Anthony, are you around or have you left us? I'm back. Good. All right. Moving on to agenda item number GB-20-06-037-724, Yeager Street. Are the applicants here with us? Laura Less. All right. So Jeff and Laura Less, uh, let's see if we can get your camera up here. Please raise your right hand. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Oh, looks like we got you muted again. There you go. Do you swear yes. to tell the truth? Okay, there we go. And your name for the record is? Laura Less. Thank you very much. Declan? Okay, so this application involves um, some new hardscape, including horizontal wood fencing and pavers. Uh, it also involves some exterior alterations, including removing the existing porch and replacing with a new covered porch and raised wood deck with an existing footprint, and also removing the aluminum siding on the rear addition and replacing with wood siding. Okay, and then if we could unmute. Ms. Less there. So for the applicant, we're getting some feedback out of your mic. So we're going okay. to mute you when you're not talking, just a heads up. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, do you have anything to add on the application? Well, I think we've been, um, you know, on the docket a couple of times. So we just try to minimize the changes and um, just to stay in um, tune with what you guys are expecting. We are not doing that rear door. We are not replacing it. So we will keep the original door um the, but the porch uh will be torn down and redone it is extremely dilapidated i think we did send over photos um probably to the point of dangerous <laughs> so and then the white siding is extremely old so we'll take that off and put on the wood horizontal siding all right so we uh take the door off the application and we're going to do the porch and the siding and the wood deck. Okay. Correct. Questions, questions, comments from the panel. So, which porch are we taking off? There's a back, a back covered porch, if you will. At this point, it doesn't look like much of a porch. It's very, very dilapidated. Um, I think it was the addition that was done. Um, I think around seven, maybe or 1920. So, okay. So you look, you look yeah, at the rotted. Sheet number six, page A, 0 0.4, looks like it's inches one. Okay, I'm having a hard time bringing it up. This is a bit far up. Okay, yeah, I see it. All right, that, that was my curiosity, my question. We have photographs here of the, of the siding underneath the aluminum. And it was done. Um, we have not taken the siding off to see what's underneath it. I, if it's salvageable, we could salvage it. But I think we went through this at a previous thing that we were going to put on um, uh, batten board or hardy plank. And you guys suggested horizontal wood siding. So we decided that would be fine and we would go with that. Okay. The house has been in disrepair. So, yeah. So, Jay, to your point, maybe we want to add a condition that if they remove that and they find something existing that's salvageable, they keep it or they replace it in kind to match the existing, the old. I think that that's a really good way to put it. And the, applicant, the, applicant, the, the intent of that is that there's a, a specific wood site underneath that aluminum. We want to match the profile that's existing as opposed to taking a a four into making the six, just so clarification. Richard Fuller, is there something else? No, that was just, I didn't know if we wanted to ask the applicant if they were. Okay. 
to that comment? Oh, we, we're totally fine with that. Of course, if it's, you know, in good repair, we would be glad to keep it and use it that way. And if not, we'll go ahead and, you know, do the replacement, obviously. I usually don't check with applicants, but I would put a bet on that not being salvageable. <laughs> uh, the way, yeah, the way that it looks right now, that's what I'm thinking, but I'm, of course, we're not sure. Sure. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Commissioners, I did think uh, you raised some questions about the fence at the, the business meeting and horizontal fencing. Yeah, actually, there, I believe there were two issues with the fencing. One is the horizontal. I've got to wait for my computer to show me the pictures. We do have fencing design on, on, in here somewhere, don't we? Picture. Oh, is it just the, the picture of the uh, the Yeager Street fence? Yeah. Um, that that fence is a is a tricky fence, and it and it actually failed initially, and they had to go back and make modifications to it because the the material that was used was boral, um, and when you if your spans are very far at all, um, the, the, those boards will tend to deform. So that that was one issue, um, the, the concern about the, the boards deforming and how you, how you do this good side out, which is required. And the other, the other perhaps bigger question has to do with the, the fact that there, um, there are two fences, because you're proposing a new fence with an, an adjacent fence. Um, and putting two fences back to back or front to front, either way, um, just never works out well because of the debris that gets caught between the two fences leads, leads to the degrading of the, uh, generally the degrading of both materials. Yeah, I understand that and I think we talked about this before. So we will just eliminate the fence and leave the existing fence there that the neighbors and that's that. <laughs> I mean, you could talk to the neighbors about yanking their fence out when you put yours up if you want, but. Yeah, we'll just probably leave it alone and let them, you know, have their fence. Any other questions or discussion points? Did anybody uh, log all those modifications? I believe it's uh, removing the door from the application, removing the fence from the application, the siding, uh, removing the aluminum, take a look and see what wood is there. If it's salvageable, great, we'll salvage. If not, we'll want to replace it with wood siding that matches the profile that's currently there. Uh, and the other, one more piece on there, the, 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 the wood deck with an existing footprint is going to stay. I move that German Village application GV200637 uh, with those uh, modifications as indicated by the applicant. Move forward. <laughs> move to this is Teresa, second. Any questions on the motion? Take the roll call. Roll call. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Thiel? Aye. Durst? Aye. Burial? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Moving on to item number seven, which will be 821 South 5th Street, uh, GV20-07-040. We have uh, Mr. Seal, Sealy. Edward, hey, everybody. Everybody. And this is Mike Windsor with Color Windows. This is Paul. I don't know if he received an invite or not, but he's never joined any of these yet. Um, okay. He uh, helped take care of it from our end. Mm -hmm. Mr. Windsor, do you have a uh, oh, camera? Oh, oh. Yeah, let's see. Did that work? Uh, waiting to see. There we are. I see your face now. Can you please raise okay. your right hand? 
Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. All right. And uh, please state your name for the record. Mike Ranger. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, so this application involves new windows. Um, I believe a prior employee uh, installed windows uh, incorrectly. So the applicant is requesting to retain existing five windows on the side elevation as installed. They're requesting to retain two arch windows on the second story of the facade with the windows to be pushed outward and appropriate trim applied. They're requesting to remove the existing arched window on the first story of the facade and to install a new door window. And then here I have some extra notes um, that the new windows were installed prior to review and approval, that the previous employee did install them incorrectly, and that the applicant has been working with staff to correct uh, the incorrect installation. And that the windows were set back too far and need to be pulled out. And that we don't have any old photos at this time to determine the original details. Um, and then I to note that the commissioners are going to try to look at the windows following the 23rd business meeting. And so I don't know if the commissioners have any feedback um, if they're able to make that visit. Uh, does the applicant have anything to add before the commissioners talk? I had sent uh, quite a few pictures, and there were storm windows on the front of those, those original windows that were arch top. The storm windows thus were removed. So there was a in the last minute question about the size of the glass it looked smaller. That was due to having storm windows on there, since the windows weren't were not downsized. But on the front, the question was, should there have been a horizontal mall across the top between the arch and the windows? And there was not one there originally. Those are originals there that aren't being replaced. But um, being being there from the inside, those were true arch top windows. So once the storms were gone, it appears there was a question of whether or not there should be a mall there. And if not, they were just installed properly. They were pushed back in too far into the home. And I want to move them out and fix the trim around the exterior of them. The lower big one was just measured wrong. I got to re uh, replace that one with one that fits the radius of the masonry. Any questions, comments from the commission? Gosh, I wish we had photos of the house from before. hard to tell when you look at those pictures with the storms on the arches that they're over the face of the win original windows, which were arches. So the windows behind the storms look like what you see there, but then the storms were put on them. And I suspect that back in the day when those were installed, they didn't have curved top aluminum in one piece. So they made a half circle and, and screwed it in a soft or rectangular storm window. Which gave it a different appearance, like you see when the storm, if you see the picture with the storm on there. I seem to remember guys on another commission on another application too. We had a discussion about how that ground floor likely wouldn't have the mall between it because that's where they would have put the money. Uh, just to know, Andrew Dobson did just post the link into the chat, and it looks like he has some older photos to help us out and uh, seeing what they might have looked like. That big window down below actually was a single hung. It actually opened and closed. So that's the big giant bottom sash. So it will raise up. And that's why it looks like there's a mall that window actually opened. Oh, it was a horizontal mall we were talking about. That might have been there before. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah those were big single hung windows that trail, the windows come across there. Yeah. Just to me, sorry. It's just to me that that looking at the shot we're looking at right now, the the size of the glazing. I mean, the size of the frame just looks really big, and the glazing looks like it's been way undersized. And I can't. Those are the architect reserve um, clad. Well, but what I'm 
really strange. The, the, and there's one shot of a, of a single window in one of the pictures. Oh, yeah, that, that was uh, the storm windows. Oh. That was a, uh, a window with the storm still on it before. Mm -hmm. I've got no other questions. Yep. Anybody else in the question? There's no more questions or comments. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, our agenda item number 7GV20-07-040A21 South 5th Street to approve the um, application as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? I'm passing because I don't understand what we're, what we're voting on. We're voting on retaining the existing five windows on the side elevation as installed. Yeah, but okay, so the picture I'm looking at right now, is that what we're approving or is that what was? The picture we're looking at now, yeah. the top yeah. two arch windows yeah. are already pushed outward. Out. They're recessed too deep. And the window on the first floor? See how the radius doesn't match the curve of the brick? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we need to reorder that window and take the outside corners up so that, that it fills the contour properly, fills the radius matches. So the outside corners were measured too low. Okay. So we can change that. We have to order a new window and then we'll raise them up so it's symmetrical all the way around. All right, I'll say, uh, trust somebody here and say aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get with Mr. Searle. Thank you. Uh, on to item number eight, EV 20 07. Number eight was tabled, so yeah. our, we have one last application, but oh. our next one will be number nine. Great, thank you. Uh, DB-20-08-028783 South 6th Avenue. Do we have William or Kathy Holdreth or someone? Yes. Yes. All right, we have Kathy. Uh, Kathy, if you looking for your camera. Okay, let's see, camera, okay. Start my video, here we go. Okay, make sure your camera is shared in your browser. Not coming on. You cannot display your video. Make sure your camera is shared in your browser and not other applications and try again. This worked the other at the other meeting. So can I speak to you? Um uh, Jacqueline, do we got some guidance from staff there? Um, I don't think we have our city attorney online. Um, wait a minute. Can you hear me? We can, but Ms. Holdreth, uh, based on city legal, we can't take testimony without seeing the face of the person giving the testimony. All right. Well, I'm going to figure this out. The other day I used it, and it worked just fine in the business meeting. So let me see what I can do. Perhaps we can move to the next application while she gets her camera up. That would be That's, great. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Can do that. All right. We'll jump ahead real quick to uh, GV-20-08-029-637 Brust Street. I have the Gramlix here. Make sure your camera is shared in your browser. This is Brian. All right. Video should uh, be on. I'm looking for your camera here, Brian. There it is. If you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, 
nothing about the truth. I do. And state your name for the record. Brian Gramlick. Great. Jacqueline? This application involves the removal of the normal maple tree and is located in the rear patio area. Uh, per the arborist reports and the request of applicant, the tree is dead. The area in which the tree is located is limited in size and not recommended for planting a new tree. Some feedback from the business meeting included that the commissioners noted the proximity of the patio to the tree may have contributed to the demise of the tree, and just that this is something to be aware of in the future. Commissioners do request staff to check records regarding their past patio related approvals. Uh, staff did make an in person visit to check our hard copies. Uh, we do not have a record of approval for the patio area. Um, I did find uh, approval for the removal of another tree in the patio area that was approved in 2018, and those documents are, should be on your screen right here. Uh, does the applicant have anything to add? Yeah, um, our our lot was split at some point, and so I believe that the line was split basically just beyond that tree, and so it, it may have made sense um, at the time the patio was put in there, um, where the patio goes up to the tree because it had room to grow behind it. But since then, we you know we no longer have control over the area behind that fence. So um, since we've lived there, that's the way everything has been. We haven't touched it, but it it still has no leaves so it's it's pretty dead questions comments from the commission i i just one question what jurisdiction do we have here i mean i can't believe they samantha smith to get a tree cut down valid question Well, this since is we already the, voted since we already voted on staff approvals perhaps we have to do it this time Ned. <laughs> well yeah i mean i'm definitely going to approve it but geez i can't believe this is in front of us i i think that there there was um and i can't remember how it came about but there was there was guidance that for trees over i can't remember whether it's eight or 12 inches in diameter that a certificate should be a, should be a, authorized or would be voted on. It was something that had originated. I, and Anthony, you may remember this in the, uh, the chairs and vice chairs meetings. I think we do. Yes. So reg regardless, it's in front of us. <laughs> Does any any commissioner have an issue with uh, the removal of this tree per the arborist report? Should it be preserved. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, it's all dead. Right. I'm in dead favor of removing all dead trees. It's very dead. <laughs> Motion to approve German Village application 2008029637 uh, Brush Street. Second. Second. All right, we got a first, we got a second. Any questions on the motion? Uh, going to the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Steele? Yes. Durst? Commissioner Durst? Aye. There we go. Uh, Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you all very much. All right. Uh, Ms. Holdreth, do you have your camera on yet? Nope. I'm still working. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Well, we'll keep on moving forward. Thank uh, you so much. Moving on to item number 11, GV-20-08-030. 871 South Lazelle Street. We have Ms. Allison or another applicant. I see you in the list. I see your camera. Great. Yes. Uh, please raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. And please state your name for the record. Annie Allison. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, so this application involves new siding, including removing the existing siding, installing insulation for the original siding. Um, it's noted that the original siding has dry rot and install hardy plank H25. Uh, the hardy plank would be installed via the lap siding method to replicate the look of the original siding. There's also a proposed porch alteration to remove the rusted wrought iron columns and replace the square wood columns and to remove the cracked concrete base and replace with wood within the existing porch foundation. 
There was some feedback from the business meeting, which included that the commissioners uh, requested investigative demolition to be completed to determine what the original window sizing and details are. Commissioners also noted um, that increasing the thickness of the exterior walls could cause issues with the fenestration and the framing. And the commissioners also noted that, um, as we explained for a previous application, that hard plank siding is not approvable to primary historic structures oh, as primary historic structures. And that hardy siding has been used as a test case in the past and did not perform well. Uh, Ms. Allison, do you have anything to add to that? Yes, I would be willing to do wood siding. Uh, so for the commissioners, uh, looks like our, I guess we'll start with the, uh, the porch. Uh, removing the rusted wrought iron columns, replacing with wood columns, uh, removing the concrete base, replacing with wood within the existing porch foundation. The issues with that approach. Or questions or comments on that. All right. Hearing no, no issues with that. Uh, on to the siding conversation. So, as the applicant mentioned, she is uh, open to wood siding in lieu of hardy plank. Any comments or questions on the siding? Yeah, what's the exposure on the siding that she's going to install? Ms. Allison, do you know the size of your siding? Four inch, five inch, six inch? It is five inch, and I did measure what the um, original siding dimensions were, so it will match the original siding dimensions. Other questions, comments from the commission? Well, the issue of putting insulation board over um, is going to require modification, removal, modification of all the trim. The and trim is not original to the original structure. I did have someone check that. Do we know what the original was? I don't believe it is even underneath there anymore. I think in the 80s when that, um, or around that time frame when they added the green siding, they redid the, all the additional trim work. I would think we probably need to have the trim details, uh, I would say, sent to staff. For approval. Just some photos, or how would you like me to do that? So we need to know uh, essentially the size of the trim, um, the across the top of the window. That should be technically proud to, uh, of the trim below. Um, I believe that there's some, some details that staff has on window trim. Is that correct, Jacqueline? Uh, yeah, I think we could provide an example. Okay. Right. I think one of the issues is that, that the, the trim boards are going to have to, somehow you're going to have to make up for the space when you add insulation board, when you, if you remove all the siding, add insul insulation board, put new siding over it, you're going to have you're thickening the sidewalls, which means that in order to maintain the appropriate distance between, you know, in order for the trim, the window trim to sit proud of the new siding appropriately, the window trim has to move away from the framing. And the insulation board was actually recommended, um, but I mean, I don't have to do that. That was just a recommendation. From a contractor. And actually, now that I read this, it, it's a little confusing because it says remove existing siding, install insulation board over oh, over the original siding. That's even more of a problem. Like if you put if you put an insulation board on top of the siding right now, the the green siding itself is probably pretty thin. You're going to have 
insulation board. We don't have a thickness for what's intended. Then you're gonna have a thickness of the wood on top of that. And then your trim has to go out beyond that wood. So if, if you're doing a one inch insulation board, it's a quarter wood trim. You're just shy of two inches of added thickness to that wall overcome. I can scrap the insulation board. It was just a recommendation. I, I don't <laughs> think that the insulation board, well, maybe it is the problem. It's beginning to sound like the original siding needs to come off if it's not salvageable. If it can. Yeah, right. I think what you're hearing from the commission is the wood siding, no issue with the wood siding, five inch. Um, it's just how it all ends up going back together uh, appropriately is where we don't have the information from, from the applicant, you, to, to really Eat the meeting. give guidance. Okay, I think we need some details, uh, how, the, how it's going to be handled. Yeah. I can get those to you. Uh, so from the commission, uh, is there any issue with the commission of having staff approve those details or does it need to come back to us? I mean, we could move it to, to make it a condition to have staff approve that. If staff's not comfortable because there's some strange situation, they could always bring it back to us, right? Yeah. Back on you okay with that approach? Staff could do that and if, um... Commissioner fully pointed out if we see something that we think the commissioner should see, we'll bring it back. Okay. All right. So then the question on the table there is uh, for the applicant, do you wish to amend your application to, to wood uh, with the details going to staff prior to any uh, procurement of the materials or installation of the materials? Yes. From the commission, is there a motion from the commission? I move to approve. Oh, you just took it off my screen. <laughs> yeah. uh, GV 20083087 Lozelle Street as amended by applicant. Second. This is Charissa. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the, the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Commissioner McCoy? Aye. There we go. Saw your mouth say aye, just couldn't hear it. <laughs> Commissioner Foley? Aye. Fair votes aye as well. I have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, on to item number 12, uh, GV 20 08 031. 555 South 5th Street, my favorite address. Uh, <laughs> do we have Mr. Tarpey or Ms. Cantor on the call? I believe I did see uh, Mr. Tarpey on earlier. Not seeing anybody on at the moment. Uh, looks like it's replacement of original windows and replacement of two doors. And we do have additional materials um, that the applicant has submitted in response to some feedback from the business meeting. Uh, I don't know if we want to wait and see if the applicant is, um, if yeah. they have signed out, if they can sign back in later. Okay, well, we'll put that one on hold. Uh, looks like Ms. Holdren has her camera on now. We can go ahead and we can jump back to item number GV-20-08-028-7855 South 6th Avenue. Uh, so this is... Before you do that, let's get her sworn in. Uh, please raise your right hand, Ms. Goldrith. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, and please state your name for the record. Kathy Holdreth. Thank you very much. Jacqueline, all you know. Okay. 
Uh, so this application involves the installation of a new garage door. It becomes of a single man door, um, a previously approved garage to a double man door for the cement materials. So while a certificate of appropriate was never issued, there was prior staff correspondence with the applicant that did state that the proposed item could be staff approved. Um, staff also notes that the man doors are located on a modern garage and are not visible from the right of way. Um, and then some feedback from the business meeting, the commissioners requested to see the correspondence and staff has included the correspondence towards the end of the application. Okay. Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, before we go further, I have to uh, recuse myself on this one. Okay, thank you. Be back in a minute. All right, Ms. Holdreth, anything to add? Uh, you know, I'm not sure what she gave you, I had saved emails and on 619 uh 2019 I um my I wanted to do two doors I saw it on another house and it was really pretty and so my contractor said no that's not in the plans you have to get permission so I emailed Corinne and she said, staff and so I sent that email along to my contractor Glenn and so we did it um, because we thought we had approval because we got an email from her that said so. So we called out the city to do the inspection and they said it's not on the plans here. Um, so anyway, then since then, um, Glenn has been talking to Kimberly and she asked him to submit the COA with this. And um, anyway, then he also sent her Corinne's email saying he could and would staff approve and he sent her the stamp plan and something on the elevation and on 6-3 Kimberly said I have everything but I've spoken to my boss and she still says it needs to go before the commission so that's where we're at we wouldn't have done it without mission um, and it's a that you guys had I know they said oh this is an oops we did it and now we're asking for permission, but we didn't. My my contractor said he'd never do it unless we had approval. So I'm hoping you guys approve it because it costs a lot of money to make the change. And the two doors are exactly what had you know, it has to be the same door. So we got a second one and everything else is according to the door plan. Yep. It really is pretty. It's prettier than the pictures. <laughs> Mr. Foley, were you gonna make a comment? I think I heard you start talking almost. Uh, no, sorry, that wasn't, it might've been just background noise. Okay. All right. Uh, Rain. Question, comments from the commission. Yeah, I just wanna clarify. Somebody said this is not visible from 6th Street, but I'm, I'm not sure that's the case or not. I'm not sure that's important. I just want to clarify that. You're correct. It is somewhat visible. I mean, yeah. it's at the back and I have a yard in front of it with a lot of plants, but yes, if you looked, you could see it. Okay. But the people who have looked and said how much they like it. <laughs> All right, so it looks like the Information we have the last sheets, last page of this all is the snippet from the email, June twentieth, two thousand nineteen, at ten o two a.m. Corinne saying she can staff approve. She can either redline plans uh, or email revised plans to stamp. Let her know either way. Which means information given back to her after this email came through. And it wasn't until we had that, and I forwarded that to my contractor. He wouldn't do it without that permit. Did restamp plans get sent back from Corinne? I think that's what you're looking at. So this email is from June of 2019. That stamp is from February of 2019. Okay. Are there red lines on that building permit on the screen? I 
can't see it. I'm using my phone now, so I can't. I understand. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to see where a revised documentation went out. I know the really? um, city came. They said we need something more than an email. We need something an approval on like. So I don't know. I can find out. I don't know if. And that's what I'm just trying to. I'm trying to establish the, the, the facts of where we're at. And, and the latest correspondence we have is June 20th, saying that it could be staff approved potentially, and that there's further action needs to be taken. And that's the last correspondence we have in our information here. Okay, as we read that email, it said. Sent it to the contractor. I mean, I thought we had the approval. She said it's office approved. And so, you know, she didn't say anything about anything else. She just said, I can do that here in the office. So I thought that was a done thing. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. We're arguing about, or are we arguing about, you know, the head of a pin? Um, it, it says, you know, the, the email from the city says, yes, I can staff approve that change. Right. Discussing whether or not that actually happened or not doesn't seem that relevant. I mean, she was, you know, she, the applicant acted in good faith. Uh, this actually came up with something else that happened at the city a while ago. Um, and I mean, let's just forget about that. This is one of those cases where someone is at worst asking for forgiveness rather than permission at best, having acted on good faith, coming back and saying, did I do this? Okay. I, I agree with, with Jay, the, obviously the intent is there to approve it, whether we have documentation or not at this point a year and a couple months later. I, I don't see backtracking. Fair, fair points. And then my question next to the commission is going to be, can we approve this on the first round or does it need to have a, a initial denial in order to approve it on a hardship case due to the situation? I, I don't think we make it a hardship case. Okay. Anthony. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, if she had submitted additional drawings and it had gone to staff, it would have been approved. So I don't, so I don't see why we need to do that. Like it's not. Yep. I just want to make sure we're, we're emotionally correct. That's all. Yep. And emotionally correct as well. Did you say emotionally or emotionally? <laughs> Emotion. We're, we're commissioned. Come on. Mr. Chairman, right. I, have a, I have a motion on agenda item number nine, application GV 2008 028 South 6th Street. Should read Street, not Avenue, um, to approve the application as submitted. Second. All right. We have a second. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Commissioner Durst. Teresa, you're muted. Aye. There we go. Uh, Commissioner Farrell stepped away. Uh, Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Moving on to go ahead and try item number 12 again. Do we have the application for 555 South 5th Street? Don't see them. Don't hear them. We'll go on to item number 13. GB-20-08-032-796 Mohawk Street. I believe I see Kate Mikes. Yeah, here. All right, Ms. Mikes, if you please raise your right hand. We swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Yeah, Kate Mikes. Thank you, Ms. Mikes. Uh, Commissioner Farrell is back with us now. Jacqueline. Okay, so this application involves installation, including installing a 26 inch by 40 
four inch deck mounted skylight at the rear portion of the house uh, with no visibility due to the rear proposed location, the roof height, and the location behind an existing flat roof dormer. The proposed deluxe skylight has both operable and fixed options and will provide light into a second floor bathroom. And the roof that it will be installing is slate, and the applicant has consulted a slate roof contractor. Also, feedback from the business meeting included that the commissioners requested confirmation of the slate installation method and whether the slate could be cut for the skylight installation. And the applicant has uh, relayed that the slate roof contractor notes that the roof appears to be original, but also nearing the end of its service life. And the applicant submitted a copy of the proposal from the slate roof professional regarding that skylight installation. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Micahs, do you have anything to add? Um, I don't think so, unless you have questions. We have a copy of that letter. Yes, it should be towards the end of the application materials. All right, lot long application. Lots of pages. <laughs> More than I've ever wanted to know about Jellock Skylights. <laughs> I didn't want to be told that I forgot something. <laughs> Strategy is to overwhelm us. <laughs> okay, that's yeah, right. Yeah. This is the this is the description from the contractor what what will be done. Oh no, I'm sorry, you have to go up a little bit. This is there you go. If you scroll up a little bit more, there's some tower replacement notes there too. For the commissioners, I think the, the issues at hand are a putting the skylight into putting a hole in a slate roof, um, as previously discussed. Um, this one, based upon the submitted photos and location, uh, would appear that it would be out of view from the public right away. Don't think that absolves it from our issues on a previous application about the life of the slate roof. I think that's a fair statement. Just pointing out the, the components to the application. Yeah. So I didn't say anything in there. Did I miss somebody talking about the condition of the roof? The applicant did uh, relay that their contractor notes that the roof appears to be ending the his service life. But do we have that in documentation? He I asked him to um send it to me and he sent me a text, so I wasn't sure how to send that to you, but um we'd like to have that on a letterhead. About the age of the roof? About the age and condition and future of the roof. Um, when we when we look at a demolition, don't we ask for two opinions? Good point. I'm just thinking if this is going to be something we're going to be facing moving forward. I think at hand, just <clears throat> up and down the commission, where does everybody stand on this? Just a, a feeling from Commissioner Panzer. Are you for or against the skylight? 
in the slate. I. Mm. <laughs> um. I think this is is a different circumstance because of the fact that it that it is not from the public way. Um, so I think I would be in favor of it. I should deal. Vote for this. I'm voting for all of them because this is not a different circumstances. We said the other one was the condition of the expanse of the slate, and this is the same condition. Whether it's visible or not has nothing to do with the historic fabric. Commissioner Durst. Teresa, you're talking about your muted. I would need to see the uh, slate roof contractor's official letter stating that the roof is at the end of its life. Mr. Ferrell. Jeff, you're muted as well. There we go. So I'm reluctant to make decisions um, based on these nearly out of their service life slate roofs when the slate roof is going to disappear in three or four or five years. I'm not sure whether it's three or four or five or 10 that is my dividing line, but I'm, I need, I need documentation other than a text and I need more than the end of its service life. I don't know whether that means five years, 10 years, 20 years. And I don't know whether that, and and it might be that it's only got five years on it unless it's properly maintained and that might have 20 years on it if it's properly maintained if it's got 20 years left on it with proper maintenance then i don't want to cut into it yeah i mean he's i if i read you his text it says the roof appears to be original it is nearing the end of its service life typical pennsylvania black slate lasts 75 to 125 years I personally don't know the age of the house right now. The slate is starting to delaminate. Replacement of the entire roof should be a consideration in the upcoming years. Commissioner McCoy. I think um, this, this is very similar to the last case that we talked about. And I believe that our position has been that we don't want to see slate, less slate in the village, that the slate roofs should be protected. Mr. Foley. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see the, the some type of official documentation, perhaps from multiple reviews of the condition of the slate. You know, let me chip in here too, that 75 to 125 years is a pretty big time period. <laughs> <laughs> And my, my stance is if it's got original slate on the house, I don't want to cut into it, period. Once it gets replaced at that point in time, uh, I, I would be for it. But with original slate intact, I don't want to do things to it that's going to disturb it further and potentially make it worse. Um, so for the applicant, Ms. Micus, I think you kind of hear where the, where the commission stands on it. Um, we can vote on the application up or down, or you can continue the application if you'd like. If I continue it, what you're asking for is just documentation from the contractor regarding the condition of the of the slate. Condition and remaining service life, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, what the expectation of that's going to be. I, I think the point was also made from two different sources. Yeah, the, the, the reason for two sources is if you have one contractor who's going to do the work, it may be more uh, inclined to shorten that lifespan to make the work go versus someone who doesn't have a financial stake in in that work. Okay. Um, at this point, I think I'd like to continue it and see if I can get that and okay. submit it and get it approved. Okay, we can do that. And then if you continue, you'll be at the top of the agenda for next month. That's the, the, the nice thing about continuing versus voting it down and then coming back again fresh. Okay. All right. Okay, so at the applicant's request, I'd like to continue. Is there a motion to continue? 
Motion to continue application GD 2008032796 Mohawk Street. Second. Any questions on the motion? Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Steele? Yep. Durst? Aye. Ferial? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye. Let's have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number 14, uh, GV 20 08 033 759 South Fifth Street. I saw Mr. Hugus before. Uh, Bill, is your camera on? Hold on. <laughs> It's on now. It is on now. We're getting some pretty wicked feedback. Yeah. <laughs> it's always fun with Bill. <laughs> Bill, I see your camera. Uh, I hear your voice. Is that better? Much better. Okay. We've had two different computers going on here. Sorry. Understood. Can you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. William Bugis, architect for the owner. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This application involves a new addition. The proposal is to add a small addition to the south of a previous addition that was constructed in 2000. The applicant would like to remove the previous addition um so at the second story they would like to retain a partial portion of the addition roof as a new connector and some feedback from the business meeting included that the commissioners requested existing elevations and the applicant has submitted existing elevations as well as a photo at the rear of the house which have been added to uh, the latter portion of the application um staff does have some concerns that the additions are larger than the historic building and have a higher view shield from the street Okay. Uh, Ms. Hugus, anything to add? Um, the, the addition that we're removing the roof was done 20 years ago. I don't have any information on what was there before. It's all gone. Uh, but in terms of what we're proposing, it's extremely close to the conceptual review we had. I pulled the dormer back on the south side two feet so that we keep this cottage scale. On the north side, I would propose a inch and a quarter rake board to be applied on top of the siding where we can't have an overhang due to building code. It is only two, and, two foot three inches away from a two and a half story neighbor. Hey, Bill, go back. What did you just say about 20 years ago? 20, yeah. What did you say about it? The addition was put on 20 years ago. I've supplied the approved drawing, which shows uh, a, a roof line that was um, a connector type roof line. But what was built was one big long addition. Yeah, and who I was the architect on that? Do you remember that? Pardon? It, Pardon? Yeah, I mean, originally what was supposed to happen was that there was an existing addition there, and when they went to re renovate it, it fell apart. Oh, it collapsed, okay. and so they had to come back with new drawings to to rebuild the addition. And I don't know why the, the connector was there, but I, I lived across the street at the time. Ah, uh, well, all I know is it's one big long roof line and we want to yeah. convert what's there to a connector. So there's a separation between the new and the old. Yep. And four inch lap smooth wood lap siding, Lincoln windows on the list. Um, roofing on the list it's pretty uh pretty predictable all right questions comments from the commission we 
weird stuff going on in the back to deal with that property line stuff, but it's on the back, so it doesn't bother me. Wow. So it's pretty big compared to the original house. I'm not sure I've got a clear picture of what it's going to look like from the front. From the front, you're going to have a little L-shaped leg poking out the side. Yeah, right, right, right. You look at sheet S S one, which is page six of your document. Yeah, it's like it's a piece is going to be sticking out. This could be tight to the house next door, but we've got similar situations all up and down. Yep, city park. Yeah. Are there any concerns or issues with what's been submitted? Motion to approve. GV 20080337590 South Fifth Street. Second. This is Teresa. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Steele. Aye. Thirst? Aye. Ariel? Aye. McCoy? Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. All right. On to. Thank you. Yep. On to item number 15. Uh, GV 20 08 150 East Whittier Street. Uh, Mr. Hugis is still on the record. Uh, Bill, do you have Mr. Arch there with you as well? Yes, my client Brian Arch is here with me. All right, Mr. Arch, if you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Brian Arch. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, so this application involves uh, a new porch roof. The applicant would like to alter the porch roof as existing is low at uh, six feet and six inches and cannot meet the building code. The applicant would like to convert the porch to a bathroom. Uh, the applicant would like to remove the flat roof of the enclosed porch section. Babe, we have one of those somewhere. The existing fascia and construct a hip roof to match the existing roof pitch and shingles. Um, some feedback from the business meeting included that the commissioners requested prior staff files regarding the porch. And staff has added those files to the end of the materials. Uh, so the applicant does uh, state that the enclosed porch section is not historic. However, staff would like to note that uh, the porch does appear on the 1951 Sanborn map. And so it's at least 69 years old. Uh, it does not appear on the 1921 Sanborn map. So it's somewhere between 69 and 99 years of age. And while not original, may be considered to have acquired significance in its own right. Thank you, Jacqueline. Mr. Hugus, Mr. Arts, anything to add? Um, I want to point out this house was originally a uh, lap siding house in 1920. They uh, stuccoed it. At that time, it had a front door facing uh, Mohawk, no side porch. In 1950 or 51, the Sandworms show the side porch appearing. Um, the biggest change from the conceptual review, which was like approximately a year and a half ago, was that we are now going to keep the built-in gutter, fascia, and soffit that's there and merely build the hip roof um, on top of that, keeping the built-in gutter so it there are no detailed problems with that inside corner window that we had discussed uh, before. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Ferriel. I just noticed the identity of the owner here. I think I'm going to have to recuse myself. I think Mr. Ernst has been wife's lawyer. <laughs> no. Please make no. <laughs> All right. Your wife needed a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting into that emotional zone and not motion, emotion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back on track. Uh, 
uh, from the commission uh, issues with putting a hip roof in place of the current roof, maintaining the, the gutters and trim that are there. Hey, Bill, what's what's the height you're going for inside there? Code wise, seven foot as an average? No, no. We're, yeah, we're going for an average. Uh, it may be a struggle with the city building department and we may have to appeal it, but it's simply an unworkable room the way it is. Uh, you know, a normal door height is six foot eight. This ceiling six foot six. Yeah, so, I, I, and I and I, I respect the fact that you're keeping. I want yeah. to point out, I think usually it's going to be pretty non-visible relative to to other additions. So I think the important part was keeping the built-in gutter where it is. So what's your what's your average height in this in the room right now with with this rafter system that you've got? Rafters are at six foot six flat ceiling. Oh, well, right now, I'm, when, I'm after you put the roof existing. on. Existing. Yeah, right, we're, existing. But after you put the roof on it, what's your clear we're, height inside we're doing, of that room average wise? We have to do. Well, we need to average seven foot, or no, we need to average. We need six foot eight above a shower. We need above a toilet, above a sink. All need to be eighty inches in front of the the appliance. We're going for whatever we can get. And I'm okay. assuming the roof. A lot of these roofs are seven twelve pitch, and I'm missing it. That's, what this is, but we would match the existing pitch of the house. I just think it should be the minimum pitch to get the height you need. That's all. I don't think it. Okay. I don't, I don't think it needs to match the existing. Just in my opinion, I think I, I agree with you. Need to do something to make it a, a usable space, mm -hmm. and you shouldn't be tied for that. But it just the impact should be minimal. Well, on, we, we on can it, do a I, geometric calculation and and adjust that seven down to whatever we have as a minimum yeah yeah I and mean, that's all i'm saying i mean i i get okay. that you need to raise it and get there somehow but i just think it should be the minimum amount of lift fair enough fair enough we'll i'm right there with to, ned to, I'll, we won't probably get into that until we start the construction yeah. construction of the roof yeah, no, but oh. I, the fact that you're keeping the facial molding and all that stuff, I think it's great. Yeah, I, I mean, for me at least, the slope doesn't torque me out that much because I think that the way the the uh, the way it engages the historic roof is going to be cleaner and neater. Admittedly, you don't see it a lot, but if the roof pitches match, it's going to be a neater and cleaner intersection there on a on a true forty five mm -hmm. degree angle rather than something weird going on. I don't think it's a I don't think it's a major deal either way. And I and I understand Ned's desire to keep it as low as possible, but I mean if it's a matter of it being six over twelve versus seven over the existing seven over twelve, I would err to, towards the seven over twelve personally. Now, unless you can get it significantly down, because I think you know the, the idea is that this is contributing age, you know. And you're modifying the way it looks. I think so significantly is is exactly the point. I think the, the the great mitigating factor between what the original design was and this is keeping the entire cornice intact, keeping the gutters intact. I think that makes a huge difference. Agree. We vote. Is there a motion? <laughs> I will vote anytime you give me a motion, Mr. Panzer. <laughs> Anytime. On uh, agenda item number 15, uh, GV 20-08-034 to approve as submitted. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, we'll vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Peel. Yes. Ned? Uh, yes. Okay, Commissioner Durst. Aye. Ariel. Stepped away. Sure, Farrell refused. refused. Commissioner McCoy. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. There we go. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes.
Thank you very much. Moving Thank on you. To Thank you. Agenda. You're welcome. Agenda item number 16, uh, GV-20-08-035-566. Yeah. Here. Uh, Here Bill, you if you are. could go ahead and uh, mute your microphone, please. I wasn't to do that. Just leave me on yours. It doesn't well, need to be on mine. Just go back to yours. Here we go. Do we have uh, Mr. <laughs> Whitlock or Mr. Fisher? Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm Mr. Whitlock. I am here. Give me one second. Sure. That's me, Mr. Whit. I'm here. All right, looking for your video. Um, it's on under Bill Hughes. Ah, I see it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Whitlock, please raise your right hand. Raise your right hand, please. There we go. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Oh, it was muted when you when you responded. Let me get Bill unmuted. There we go. Maybe. Bill showing. There we go. Okay. Try now. I can hear you now. I, I do. Fantastic. <laughs> State your name for the record. Um, Eric Whitlock. Okay. Got that out of the way, Jacqueline. All you. Okay. This application includes a roof replacement. We <clears throat> have like to replace the existing slate roof to match um, per the submitted site plan. They like to substitute a new silver standing seam, 16 inch metal roof on the addition rather than a previously proposed asphalt chimney roof. They would like to install three additional skylights on the rear side of the cottage per the submitted plan. And the slate roof area uh, is proposed to have a tenor's red ridge roll. There was uh, feedback from the last business meeting. Um, it was quite a bit of it. So the applicant did respond to that feedback. Um, they said that in, for a question and the gauge of the standing sea metal, that it would be 24.16 inches um, Sheffield panels, that the manufacturer would be the Sheffield 16 inch standing seam. Um, the architect has called out a dimension for the skylights to be away from the property lines, which is 36 inches. Skylights are to occur within the existing asphalt roof area on the cottage. The metal roof only occurs on the garage addition, and the asphalt roofing is existing and to be replaced for the GDC approved roofing list. And that the plans are up to date and that no existing portions of the building are to be removed and they are still adhering to the approved plans. Okay. Uh, Mr. Whitlock, anything to add? Um, I I don't believe so. I thought you guys might have some questions, though. That's the next step. Questions, comments from the commission. I highlighted all the changes. So. Yeah, yeah. We heard that. <laughs> On the record. Yeah. Yes. I hate J Panzer. <laughs> we knew that before you said already. It. Already knew that. Yeah, right. let's keep it. Let's keep it on the application here. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. So, from the from the items on the on the list, uh, replacing the slate roof uh, to match existing per the submitted plan. Yes. Any issues from the commission on that? Hearing none, I'm going to say no issues. Uh, the standing seam metal roof. Um, on the addition in, instead of asphalt shingles. What color, Bill? Sorry. I would like to go with the turn metal color like we use a lot down here. Um, I think if it were in a color like Tinner's Red, which is another historically appropriate color, it'd be way yikes. too bright. Yeah. <clears throat> And I really don't want to do black because of maintenance issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a question at the business meeting about the gauge of the metal roofing. Uh, yes, uh, 24 gauge, 16 inch panels, standing seam, inch and a half tall. Yes, yeah, so we had some cases in the past that went with a thinner gauge and they uh, turned out Poorly with hail damage. Understood. Understood. 
that, this that is the roof uh, manufacturer we've used multiple times down here. In 24 gauge? Well, I'm not totally sure exactly what the gauge was. That, that is correct. But typically we're, we're using 24 gauge. The roofer's done other jobs for us, so I'm assuming it's the same gauge right. in the past. Uh, other items, the three skylights on the rear side of the cottage. Mm -hmm. Any issues? So, the so there was a question. There was a question. Um, what two weeks ago? Last week or mm -hmm. two weeks ago? Um, that that maybe they were occurring. There was some question as to what roof materials existed and where they were. Um, where these skylights will occur is in an asphalt existing asphalt roof section, and we're going to replace that. That uh, per the plans, we will replace that asphalt with new asphalt shingles in that same area not visible at all even the neighbor's <clears throat> building butts up to it within a foot and a half and then any issues from the commission on the ridge roll all right any other questions or comments from the commission Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on German on app agenda item number 16, GV 20 08 035566, South 4th Street, to approve as submitted. Second. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Your votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, moving on to GV 20 08 036 307 Beck Street. We have Noah Babry. Here. Babry, Babry sorry. Okay. Uh, I see your face. If you would please. Oop. And then uh, Brett Lance speaking as well. Or Tina, I believe, Tina. but uh, I'll I'll speak for them. So yeah, we were going to let Noah up. speak. Okay, then uh, Mr. Mayberry, if you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Yeah, Noah Mayberry, uh, foreground studio for the owner. Thank you, uh, Jacqueline. I think I'm going to recuse myself. <laughs> Noah is a former client. Okay, well, don't leave. We still have one uh, on the table. Still. Yep. yep. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, okay. um, I need to recuse myself as well. This is McCoy. Okay. Yes, recusing. Okay. <laughs> Go right, on to Jacqueline. Sure. This application involves a new hardscape. The yep, applicant would like to replace the existing brick patio with porcelain tile. They would like to I'm looking at a different thing here. Um, replace the existing deck with composite decking. And add a second composite deck. So I'd like to install a structure pergola over the existing deck era area, and the pergola would be an extruded powder coated aluminum to match the fixtures and details on the building. The pergola will tie directly into the building uh, with no posts and would be mounted about uh, 10 feet above grade. The applicant would like to install a prefabricated fire pit water feature in Pearl Island. The applicant will be updating and tying into the existing drainage system and including an existing trench drain and surface drain, the existing patio that outlets the two curb cuts on deck. There's also feedback from the business meeting and that the commissioners requested specs concerning gravel and patio. The applicant did submit um, a website regarding the specifications. And I'm going to enter that into the chat here just in case the commissioners don't have that handy. And if anyone who's not a commissioner would like to take a look. All right, uh, Ms. Mabry, do you have anything else to add? Uh, just uh, specifically in regards to the last 
uh, point there. Uh, I think it was Commissioner Panzer had a question about um, the permeability of the uh, new patio material. And that was what this uh, supplementary um, information I supplied was for uh, the uh, technical data from the manufacturer as far as the joint compound in between the tile. Uh, and then also a uh, uh, cut sheet from the um, tile manufacturer showing uh, approved uh, app uh, installation application of dry laid uh, compact. Of course, I lost my headset as you finish that, but let me um, let me ask a question. Where, I mean, yeah. I'm looking at dry laying. Are you going on gravel? It's going to be a compacted gravel. Uh, okay. So gravel. It's 0.1.0. It's 0.1.2. I, I just want to know what detail. There's a lot of there's a lot of paper in this thing. I want to know which one I I need to be looking at. So dry laying on okay. gravel. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for clarification, this is all inside the courtyard, not uh, okay. not exposed to the public right away. Yes. My questions got answered. Any other questions or comments from the commission? If there are none, is there a motion? Can a chair get a motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number 17, GV 20 08 036 307 Beck Street to approve as submitted. Second. All right, we have a second. Are there any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the roll call. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioners McCoy and Foley have both recused. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you, Thank you very much. All right, we'll try to go back one more time. Uh, item number 12, 555 South 5th Street. Uh, we don't have Mr. Tarpey or Ms. Cantor. Uh, commissioners, if you can look at this application, is this something that uh, we can approve from the information that was provided since the business meeting or. Do we, do we understand how many windows are being installed on this building? Because it is a duplex it is a double. And we've always maintained that if you're doing one side, the other side has to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did post uh, those questions. The applicant uh, from the feedback from the business meeting. The applicant has responded that all windows on the building, except the rear second floor window will be replaced. Or, or they're all original, um, except for the second floor window. Um, that one was replaced with an unknown date. Uh, they are aware of the option of the full screen door that was brought up. Um, they have submitted additional photos of the storm doors requested. And the applicant did note that they would be replacing to match, but um, that's a question, another question I have because that doesn't, you know, it's a little different from what is proposed. Have, have you gone and assessed these windows? No, I have not made uh, any site visits recently. Yeah, I, I think we need a site visit before we could approve removing these original windows. Uh, not allowed to do site visits at this time. <laughs> Well, then we can approve. Yeah, that's where I'm at, too. It's going to have to wait until somebody can take a look at it. That's just part of COVID. Uh, in order to at least get some feedback to the applicant coming out of this, um, the storm doors that are proposed, they had provided two new photos at the end of the packet. I know we talked about we weren't sure if they were full glass doors inside or not. Right now, it's a looks like a half door on the photo on page nine, and page ten is another half door with a more decorative glazing. Storm doors have the uh, X at the bottom. Any problems with replacing it with the storm doors provided?
it sounds like no issues with storm doors. You can pass that back on to the to the applicants. I, I'm sorry, I, I was muted when I started talking. That don't our guidelines actually talk about using full light storm doors? Am I? I could be just hallucinating that, but. Uh, I got them here, Jay. I'm looking. Thank you. I may have them set here also. Windows doors. That's what we did on our house, but I can't remember because it was what the guidelines called for or what it was what we preferred. And it seems like we ought to preserve the view of the historic door. Well, if they have an existing door and they're replacing existing to match. Yeah. I got it. I got it here, Jay. When storm doors are installed, they must be of simple design, preferably in wood, and with full height glass section that permits full view of the main door. Appropriate student storm doors are illustrated in drawing 14. Decorative features such as stick-on strap hinges, scalloped edges around window openings, and cross buck panels must be avoided. There you go. Okay. I think there have been cases where we have allowed half light when they are immediately in front of a half light door but that's not what's going on here yeah this is funky mm -hmm. yeah well some of those are the drawings shown in the guidelines do show some half light options in addition to the full light correct on, on page 61 sorry half light storm doors or half light doors storm doors yeah, but it doesn't clarify to Jay's point is if that's intended to match the door or not. Mm -hmm. It does seem to contradict a little bit of what the, the, the actual recommendation said. Preferably in full height, I guess, is what it says. Yeah, doesn't demand it, but prefers it. But either way, uh, I don't think we can, we can take a straw poll, but I don't think we can improve the windows right now. Um, put it this way, is any commissioners in favor of improving the windows as submitted? Well, otherwise, we're probably going to have to continue the application. All right, not hearing anybody for it. Is motion, there a motion to, to continue? Motion to continue application GV2008031555 South 5th Street. That is fun to say. <laughs> All right, we got a second. Any questions on the motion? I right, take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Good deal. Aye. Commissioner Ferial? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley. Commissioner Foley, Brent. Aye. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Very good. Uh, chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. I think that's the full agenda. Yes, I believe so. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Any questions on the motion? Non-debatable motion. <laughs> <laughs> There's one in every crowd. <laughs> Commissioner Panzer. I got Robert's rules right here. Aye. Deal. Aye. Aye. Real. Aye. Boy. Aye. Holy. Aye. Brent. Aye. There we go. Commissioner. All right. <laughs> Chair votes high as well. Hey, I Brent. Passes. We adjourn. Hey, Brent. You were, yeah. you know, 555 South 5th Street is fun to say. For a time, my amateur oh. radio call sign was A A eight H C. Oh man. It ended up A eight H C. That's great. <laughs> Appreciate everybody's time. Uh we'll jump off here so staff can get on with their evening. So thank you very much everybody. Time before seven. Thank you. Great job guys. Thanks, everybody. Good to see everybody. Bye.